During the 70s. In the early days, um, as a matter of fact, Josephville is, is a mentor of mine. He was one of my mentors. Um, the band that I was singing with back then, the drummer was Josephville. He was Kepinto? He, he was the drummer. And I was the, I was the lead singer. And mm -hmm. then um, Josephville went, went and formed a, a group called Culture. So he had to leave the band and, and I ended up taking on as an apprentice drummer. I ended up being the drummer because we had a whole bunch of little gigs and didn't have um, a drummer like right away. So I had to like fall right in there and I ended up playing and singing. It wasn't easy at first but I, I did play the drums and sing and, and I was known back then as a singing drummer for, many, for over 20 years. Did, did you record any material with Joseph Hill when, you were, when he was playing in your band? Back in the days um, with, with my first Recording was a song called Susie, but this was after 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 me and her, I went different ways with Josie Hill. Um, we, they had a talent contest and I ended I ended up being the the, the, um, the winner of the talent contest. I had, and part of the part of the um, part of the prize was was to have my song recorded. And later on, I went to Joe Gibbs Records and and um. Joseph Hill actually took me there and I ended up recording a song called um, Akkas No Kakkas. It was a big song back in the days. Mm -hmm. This was like recorded in 1973. Mm -hmm. And you didn't start to record like your first album before the late 90s, but did you record any material that could be produced as an album before that that has never been released? I recall quite a few of them that, 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 that I just that was just like pre-release. You, you would have to, you could probably still find them if you go to the internet. Because nowadays everything is on the internet. Some called stone-hearted woman. I was a young kid back then. Just mm -hmm. name a few of them. Some of their songs I, I don't remember. <laughs> Somebody bring them back to my attention. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't remember, but I, I recorded a whole bunch of songs since then. Yeah, yeah. The first, my, my, my biggest um, single was a song called Don't Take My Kind of Sweet. Yeah. That one got me noticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, ask me some questions because I'm ready to answer. <laughs> You're the, oh, all right. So um, you played drums on the album Africa Standalone for Yeah, that was, a, that was Culture's first album which was um, produced by a record company from out in New Jersey called um, April Records. Yeah, Africa Stands Alone, songs like Down in Jamaica, Dog and Ham, Dog, them kind of that. Iron Sharp made Iron. I was the, the premier drummer I played on all those tracks. Then um, it seemed like Joseph and, and the record company had a falling out. So they ended up re-recording them. Sly and Robbie, Sly and um, the Revolutionaries re-recorded. They call they call that first one, that the one after. They call it um, harder than the rest. Mm. Mm -hmm. You you also um, played drums for the Mighty Trees, who were formed by four oh, members. No, but yeah, that, it, there, there was there was there was um, some other members of culture. Mighty Trees. And I have not heard um, anything again from that group. Yeah. They, they did one album, um, Mighty Trees, where they saw, did songs like, All they do in the morning is to fuss and fight in the backyard, sinking in the mist. Them songs, they just, those are great songs. I don't know what happened, but the first time I heard that group, I thought, okay, here's a group that's going to go somewhere, but I never heard them recording any more songs. You also recorded, uh, you played drums for uh, an album produced by Wackies, it was Roots Reggae yeah. by John Clark. Yeah. So how did you meet Wackies? Was it in, in New York? New York. Yeah, you went there. in the Bronx. I moved from, I moved from, I used to live in Detroit, Michigan. 
And then um, I start going up to Canada, up to Toronto, because Detroit, Detroit is like four hours north across the border. So I start going up to Canada because I, um, I was like searching. I came from California. Um, oh, let me tell you before that. I was with a group named Happiness Unlimited in, in Ochoirios, in Jamaica. And um, Stevie Wonder came to, to visit, came to vacation, and he heard us. And he was visiting for about two weeks every night he'd be on stage with us. And decided to take us back to, 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 to America. That's how I actually came living in America. Hmm. We were doing, doing a, working on a project, recording and stuff. And um, I don't know what happened, so things didn't fall through the right way. So I ended up in Detroit, and I started going to Canada. Um, one time, Leroy Sibbles of the Hectones, he, he came to Detroit and he heard me playing drums. I said, what? You're right here and we need a drummer. So he invited me to Toronto. And then I started visiting Toronto, visiting Toronto played with a bunch of different bands. Till one, one, this guy named Shined, a recording mm -hmm. artist named Shined, he, he wanted a drummer that could travel. And um, a friend of mine playing bass in the band um, decided to um, call me, get me, ask me if I wanted to do that game. So I moved from Toronto, moved back from Toronto, I moved back into New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I met Wacky. And that's how I met um, Clement, that Coxon. And that's where my career really, really started. Yeah. When I met Coxon, start recording for Studio One. Yeah. Did some new music and things just took off. After I recorded the album, Brother to Brother, everybody started calling me, want me to sing this, want me to sing this. Like, oh, okay, they like the style. Yeah, everybody started giving me a tape. Can you write a song on this? Because I write 99% of what we sing. Can you write a song on this? Can you write that? Back then it was cassette. So give me give me a cassette with a rhythm. So I start getting a whole bunch of different rhythms from people. And um, that's where it all started. And I look back and I try to keep music, try to make positive music that people can relate to. And nothing that's that, that um, people can listen, that their children can listen to. I keep it clean. Mm -hmm. I love clean music because I know that good rhythm and positive lyrics will last forever. Anytime you pick it up and play, you can always enjoy it. And you don't have to cover your kids' ears when they hear it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, keep, I keep it like that. Everybody do their own thing, but I keep it like that. While you were in Canada, you worked with the uh, satellites? Yes. Recording oh, them. you know about that group, Satellites? Well, I tried to find their music, but I could not hear it because it, it, it's, it, it, very it's very rare on, on, yeah. on, 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 um, on the internet. I just Google, you try to Google them, you see some of their music, but it's very rare. I work with Satellites, I work with a group called the Hit, the Hit Squad. We were the band that used to back everybody. First time Buju Bantan came to Canada, mm -hmm. I was a drummer. I played for Barry Salmon, yeah, and um, a whole bunch of different artists from back in the days. It was not a fun till I, and then I left um, Toronto, I, I went to New York, I played for Sister Carol, I played for The Meditation, and I played for a bunch of artists, um, Big Youth, um, Junior Reed, and then um, the final one was um, Gregory Isaac with a, with a band called Calabash. Mm. We toured all over the world. And um, that was that was my turning point where I decided to go solo. Everybody keep telling me, we hear the music and we hear the singing, but we can't see who's singing. You need to come out front. And I took I took the advice and decided to let somebody else play the drum and come out front. I still, you know, you, you notice that I got that feel up the drum tonight because I yes. love, still love playing drums, right. but I have to have a drummer play for me. This band that I work with tonight is awesome. Yeah, real good. And uh, while you were in Canada, did you meet people like uh, Johnny Osborne? Who yeah. Was there at the time? I, met, I met Johnny Osborne in Toronto. And then Johnny Osborne moved to to New York. He, he lives in he lives in in Brooklyn right now. Hmm. Yeah, I left him there in Brooklyn. He, he keep traveling all over all over the place because people tend to love the um, old school music. So even though we're, we're, we're even though we're, we're vintage, we still stay current because I have not stopped recording. Right now we got three, 
three albums on hold, waiting uh, on hold, wait, waiting to uh, to release. So I have to uh, space them up. Cause when I had an old bunch of recording in the early days, everybody got recorded with me, and I, I don't know what happened. They wouldn't put them out until the studio one album, and a whole bunch of music come out all over the place. It, it's a swamp. So I decided to space them now. Right. You know, one after the other. We do an album every year. Right. Mm -hmm. So who? The latest, the latest album that, that I have is with um, Love Injection from out of out of London. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, oh Lord, give me power. I, I use that rhythm and sing, brother to brother, and then a whole bunch of other songs. You know what? I was hoping I could hear that song tonight. We rehearsed that song. I didn't even play it. I just remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, girl, you've got me in the right mood tonight. Now, holding steady and I'm doing all right. I know we fuss and sometimes we fight, but I feel so lonely when you're out of my sight. Can't you see? That was one of my favorite. Prisoner of Love. Back in the studio and this. We did rehearse that song. I know that. that I guess. I guess they got tired. Mm. Yeah, it was like two hours. So oh, really? Yeah, two hours and ten minutes, approximately. Last night we did two hours and thirty minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, well, that's long. I mean, the last time I went to a concert was maybe like one hour. <laughs> uh, well, not that people get their money's worth. And I'm like a, one of them old, one of them old two bump back in the days, you know, like the hotter it gets, sweeter it sounds. And that's me. The warmer I get, the longer I sing, is the more I want to sing and the better it feels. You know, the, the lungs exercise. I like that. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to finish now because uh, they have to be to. They want to get an interview as well. Okay. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah, man. Uh, Thanks. You say love. Bless. It's quite a few of uh, uh, quite a few of uh, good musicians and good people that perform are like dying. Uh, oh my goodness! It's a few of us left. We have to cherish every one of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's a few. Because everybody wants to be a DJ nowadays. I, I, I tend to be partial to the original music and keep it like that. Mm -hmm.